someone of Persimmon, some are just heard of, someone knows is out there. The fight question by what you put on your back, the label of your shoes and the name of your bag. This is nothing at the girls who know nothing about fashion or style except for being able to read price tags, it said. And this kind of behavior beats the unique fashion world with its own inspirations, powers and possibilities to the ground by simply dismissing the process of getting to know yourself and transporting yourself in a dirty clothes. Fashion is the only language that works in a global range without the necessity of using words to transport a message, such a statement, or share your cause. Style is a dialect of fashion, and finding your own style is a process that takes a lot of time, effort, and an open mind to evolve, to develop, to change, to grow, to find yourself, and analyze your true purposes in life. Well, explain why you choose to wear what you are wearing today. Can you recall any fashion trends from the previous year? What makes this fashion trends memorable? Great ideas. Moody Laura. Consider this is the most seamless transition between seasonal wardrobes. Your fresh spring colors turn a little darker. We search on the runways of brands like Coach 1941, Terry Burton Frog Collection. Hey, pink. Are you tired of hearing the term millennial pink? Last fall, you probably came across. It's toned down sibling, pale pink, grey, suiting, featuring deconstructed blazers, perfectly tailored trousers, and plenty of grey stripes. What does fashion mean to me? Fashion is about expressing my identity using my clothes to tell someone something about me. Think. What does fashion mean to you? We have discussed your style, fashion, trends, your clothes. Now we'll discuss how fashion trends can be forecasted for the coming season. Why are you wearing my dress? Why? Goodbye, Melania Pink. Hello to the outer world. I then try and describe some fashion trends for the current season. Which ones do you experience personally? Which ones do you think the most popular and why? Well, you will work in groups of three. You should consider individual observations, but record your findings as a whole. Your groups should brainstorm together to come up a list of current fashion trends. You should do an online search for a, a casting website. The trend for casting website should be displayed by the projector, so you can see what trends are first publicized on the site. Great presentation from the first group, but I have some questions. Could elaborate and submit it. What kind of person, profession, age range would be most likely to wear this trend? The next slide. Graphic paintbrush effect. How long do you think the trend will last? 
that are throat slight, girls and Chanel's best friend. What stories do you think will sell this trend? Now, choose a season to research. We will use a search engine to research the cost trends for a chosen fashion season. You will list six findings on the forecasting page. You will think whether each trend will be a flop, fat, normal, or a classic based on your research and observations. Good luck! Tradical gallery, not opera. Cyber security. Your new hobby. Risk assessment. Running a risk assessment on your business's cyber security should be a routine process, no matter how big you are or what businesses you are in. Security incidents can happen to any business, especially small businesses. Either because hackers believe there are an easy target or they're trying to breach a larger company by going through their small partners. While self-assessment and monitoring should be a continuous process, a comprehensive risk assessment should be conducted at least once every Two years. Uh, where to begin? In an ideal world, risk management should always start with two key components being defined and agreed at the most senior level in your organization. Risk appetite. This is an articulation of the amount of risk you are willing to accept to meet strategic objectives. Each cyber threat should be considered and then a statement constructed that represents how much appetite you have for each. Mm, incorporating factors such as time horizon at a given confidence level. In most organizations, risk appetite is at least agreed, if not defined at both level. In large organizations, a tiered risk appetite approach is adopted where more granular risk appetites exist to accommodate the different layers with the seat under the umbrella of the boat's risk appetite. Talking personally for a minute, tone from the top is crucial. It effectively sets the scene for the whole organization and if position counter to the risk approach will always supersede it. While Spark is a great case in point, their public statements stressed always putting the needs of their customers right and the importance of ethics. But in practice, the business operated in a quite different way behind the scenes. A pump seems the uh, system. Employee review, no job security, no work-life balance. This is a company of more number of HR resources than the people actually work for company revenue. A pump systems continues its expansion, but investors lose confidence. Your people are your most important asset. They determine the customer If it's good, you win. If it's poor, you lose. It's really that simple. Software solutions for your business. Trust, not just software. Definitions of risk 
impact and probability. Having defined your risk appetite, you should now define your organization's approach to scoring impact and probability. For impact, consider what outcomes arise from each risk being realized. Um, for instance, are they purely financial? Uh, what extent of operational disruption matters? Can people be harmed physically or in other ways? Uh, with cyber risks, you should always consider confidentiality, integrity and availability. Probability, some organizations choose a highly quantitative approach. In the example below, we use extremely remote, remote, possible, likely. Generally, this is our go-to scale because we believe that any inherent risk will materialize if you wait long enough. With both of these definitions, it's important to start simple. It's no good having a super sophisticated risk management approach that only a tiny number of people in the organization understand. Also, we always try and relate these definitions back to an organization's actual cyber risk, loss experience, or those of similar organizations, making the exercise more practical than theoretical. So now, on to the actual risks. The five risks. The initial process of identifying your risks typically takes the form of a brainstorming session where you consider what you're trying to achieve and what cyber-based issues could prevent you. It's important to give each risk a succinct but simple to understand title. Consider how other stakeholders will interpret this as it will become shorthand for the risk itself on meetings and monitoring activity and you want to avoid changes it cause of many and sometimes serious misunderstandings. Next, describe the event that prevents you from achieving your team's objectives. In this example, our customer's data is exposed to authorized parties impacting our business objective of safeguarding our customer's data. Capture both the causes, what triggered the event, and the effects, what were the consequences. If you can, identify and assign a risk owner, so uh, stakeholders can see who is accountable for oversight of this risk. Next, we need to assess inherent risk for each risk. This is the assessment of a risk's impact and probability before factoring in the control environment. Taking its lead from FFX, our fabricated company has set out in its privacy policy that we have built our reputation on our commitment to deliver reliable information to our customers both businesses and consumers, and to protect the privacy and confidentiality of personal information about the consumers. Therefore, we will score the impact as catastrophic, given our company's public statements. We assessed the probability as possible, as we have had singular issues happen before. Identify your existing mitigation. Moving on, it's now important to us to identify what existing risk mitigants or controls we already have in the business. In our fabricated example, our company has adopted the UK's National Cyber Security Center and CSC, 20 critical controls. Of course, in practice, there would be many other mitigants, such as insurance policies and other lines of support and assistance to also consider. 
map the controls and risk. Next, take each risk in turn and begin to map controls from our control environment that meet against this risk. We also capture key attributes about each control, which will help us assess their um, fitness for purpose. Assess your residual risk. Having mapped our controls, we now must consider the extent to which the control environment reduces the um, inherent risk. We capture this as the residual risk. As you can see image in our example, our current control environment reduces the likelihood of the event occurring but doesn't lessen the impact should be the risk materialized. Make your risk decision. Finally, with our completed risk profile in hand, we can now consider this against the relevant risk appetite statement. And for each risk, we can decide whether they need to consider further mitigating actions to meet our overall risk appetite or whether we are happy to accept them. In the example, having considered the risks for control environment, we have decided that two of the controls were not designed sufficiently for this risk. We'll escalate this to management with a view to obtaining the go-ahead to improve their design. Therefore, our risk decision at this point in time in respect of these residual risks control further uh, so to sum up what we have laid out here is just an overview of the process that you know what you are doing and what you are looking for, preparing a risk assessment. Having a glancing note of cybersecurity won't be enough when trying to find vulnerabilities that attackers can explore it. It may offer advantages for you to do your own risk assessment because you know how your network operates and you may have built it. Security is always going to be a cat and mouse game because there will be people out there that are hunting for the zero day award. You have people that don't have configuration management, don't have vulnerability management, don't have patch management.
The moment. Hawk the moment. I like this phrase. Hawk the moment. What do you think about hawk the morning? The only place that you can be in harmony with the universe is the present moment. Of how now the past is done, the future, the just a figment of your imagination. And where a future does show up, it can only show up as a moment of now. So I look if you get damn good at learn how to hashtag. Hug the moment. You will always be in harmony with the universe. And to be crystal clear, hugging the moment doesn't mean being passive. It doesn't mean resignation. What hugging the moment does mean, however, is that you're largely illuminating. the mental and emotional negativity that automatically creates stress when you hashtag hate the moment. So when you embrace what is, you just bring a different energy, a different quality of conscience to the actions you take from the moment on. And honestly, this is just a different way of declaring what I just shared a minute ago when I said Resist nothing. Some people just might find the framework of hugging it a lot easier to swallow than the idea of resist nothing, which can be super hard for action or other folks like you and me to even wrap our heads around bottom line is this. When you embrace the current moment of now, no matter how it shows up, you will instantly feel a sense of flora and peace and power. So remember. When in doubt, hashtag hug it now. Let's moment worth a tweet about. You can be completely at harmony with the universe and hustle for what you want. Well, if you see in your mind, you can hold in your hand. I believe that I can create whatever I want to create being realistic. I have learned to value imagination in a much broader sense. Imagination 
is not only the unique human capacity to envision that which is not, and therefore the fount of all invention and innovation, in its arguably most transformative and revelatory capacity, it is the power that enables us to empathize with humans whose experiences we have never shared. When you grow up, you tend to get told that the world is the way it is and your your life is just to live your life inside the world, try not to bash into the walls too much, uh, uh, try to have a nice family life, uh, have fun, save a little money. That, that's a very limited life. Life can be much broader once you discover one simple fact, and that is everything around you that you call life was made up by people that were no smarter than you. And you can change it, you can influence it, you can, you can build your own things that other people can use. And the minute that you understand that you can poke life and actually something will, you know, if you push in, something will pop out the other side, you can, you can change it, you can mold it. Um, that's maybe the most important thing, is to shake off this, uh, this uh, erroneous notion that life is, is there and you're just gonna live it. You have to believe that something different than what has happened for the last 50 million yeah. years yeah. of history. You have to believe that something different can happen. Dreams without goals are just dreams, and they ultimately fuel disappointment. Goals on the road to achievement cannot be achieved without discipline and consistency. We are all telling ourselves a story, and that day mine changed. First, to turn nothing into something, you start with ideas and imagination. The only place that fear can exist is in our thoughts of the future. causing us to fear things that do not at present and may not ever exist. Danger is very real, but fear is a choice. If you see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. I believe that I can create whatever I want to create. Being realistic is the most commonly traveled road to mediocrity. Why would you be realistic? Imagination can't really be nothing. We call it nothing because it isn't tangible. It isn't that real. But it is almost real. Ideas that become so powerful in your mind and your consciousness, they seem real to you even before they become tangible. Imagination that is so strong that you can actually see it. You can actually see it.
without goals are just dreams and they ultimately fuel disappointment. Goals on the road to achievement cannot be achieved without discipline and consistency. I believe that I can create whatever I want to create being realistic.